In the end, the team has shown the mental determination to carry on. But the runner's level of physical fitness could well be too poor to make the marathon a feasible goal. I didn't find the mile easy at all. And everything was burning and hurting and I thought I was going to die. But uh, I did it. And if I can do one mile, I've only got to do another 25. And I did the one mile so easily. And I'm sure I can do 26. <laughs> Michelle's marathon dreams came as a complete shock to her family. At home, she's famous for her phenomenally unhealthy lifestyle. Lots of overindulging and no exercise. I've been married 15 years to her. Okay. As much as I love you, babe. Okay. She don't even walk up the stairs. I have never, ever met such a barnard or <laughs> couch potato in all my life. We got to the top of the drive and she goes, oh, Tom, I'm tired. <laughs> But behind the laughs, there's a very serious reason why Michelle wants to change her ways and put herself through physical hell. My dad died just after he turned 16. That had a really profound effect on me. He had an unhealthy lifestyle, he didn't exercise, he smoked, he had an unhealthy diet, you know, he liked his fatty foods and his fry-ups. And I felt really cheated and robbed of, of my dad, because I was only 35. But I don't want to be like that for my kids. I don't want my kids to go through losing me at an early age. And I know the way that I live my lifestyle now, they probably would. While the runners enjoy a last night of freedom, Steve and Sally are discussing how they can best help them achieve their tough marathon goal. I think today was a little bit of fun, to be perfect. Yeah. Honest. They haven't got an idea yet of what, what lies ahead of them. And whatever we put them through tomorrow has got to give them a taste of that. And then they've got to go away understanding and realising exactly. that the next three, four weeks, to be honest, if they don't change habits, that's, that's drinking, eating, yeah. they don't all come together, then well, when they come back in a month's time, they, they will have already lost so much time, yeah. it'll be too late to too pick late it up again. I think most of us have done the, the last bits of our unhealthy lifestyle. We've all had a, a couple of beers and got everything out of our system, so hopefully from tomorrow it'll be a new start for a lot of us. To get those guys in any shape to be able to run, even, I don't know, two, three, five miles, mm. We're going to have to spend the next two, maybe even three months getting them physically up to speed to be able to do that. I mean, it almost seems impossible. The next morning begins with a harsh reality check about their performance at Crystal Palace and the scale of the challenge they've taken on. So when you come back next month, those of you that walked, we expect you to be able to run the whole of that mile. That is your mark to aim for. I would say if you can't do that, then your chances of even finishing the marathon, even walking a fair chunk of it, are very, very slim. Right, this morning uh, is the beginning of your new training schedule. When you leave here today, we want you to be able to start thinking about exercising four times a week. We're really looking to do two running sessions, but also two types of aerobic sessions. You've got to keep that heart rate going. First on the agenda is running training. But the team soon realises before they can run, they literally have to learn to walk. So a lot of the sessions will be two minutes of jogging and one minute of power walking in between. So what I don't want to see is, you know, you're doing your jogging or whatever and then you just walk and almost stop. You've got to keep that heart rate going. So we're going to practice that power walking move. I won't wiggle my bum, but literally, just making sure that you get a good speed. Right, that was walking. Jogging, the benchmark I always say is if you can't speak, you're not jogging, you're running, you're going too fast. That was too fast for most of you. I was jogging. That was my jogging pace. I was at the back with John. For lunch, Dr. Lahraman has prepared a delicious spread the hungry runners would love to get stuck into. But there's a catch. Everything here on this table, in my book, belongs in a skip, okay? 
absolutely everything. These are foods from now on you're going to do your darndest to try and avoid or consume very little of. Okay? And if you look at it, first of all, the first thing that comes across is it's all shiny, and that's because of the amount of fat that's in there. A drink of this size probably contains in the region of three to 400 calories. <coughs> okay? That would take you four miles to run that drink off. For any of you who've forgotten, these things here are fruit and vegetables. Fish, make this your best friend. Okay? Chicken, pork, any kind of lean meat, even duck, you can have duck, but you take the fat off. So the rules are one to two units maximum per night of alcohol, no processed foods, filling yourselves with fruit and veg. So, grab a plate, grab some cutlery, dig in. That would normally be my table. When I walked in, I thought, oh, great. <laughs> and then I realised we can't have any of that. <laughs> it was a bit... Mm -hmm. But equally, you need to think, well, this is a whole load of stuff that you've never tried before as well. So rather than um, being sort of uh, in uh, a grieving process for all your favourite things, you might actually, after a while, begin to realise that this tastes a whole lot better. I'll say bye-bye to that table. Yeah, bye-bye. <laughs> OK. OK, then, whose is the chocolate biscuit down there? Who's looking guilty? <laughs> <laughs> it fell on the floor. Yeah, right. <laughs> After lunch, it's back to work. On top of their running training, everyone will have to do two other sports sessions every week. Now, what I really believe is finding some sort of aerobic exercise that you enjoy. There's no point in going on a bike if you absolutely hate it, or going in a swimming pool if it's the worst thing in the, in the whole world. But there's loads of different types, whether it, we're gonna go through trampolining, football, <coughs> mountain biking, swimming, and I think the more variety that you can do, the better. So what do you do when you get stung? Do you pee on your leg? I don't know. <laughs> no, that's jellyfish. While the runners discover just how many ways there are to get fit, Dr. Lahraman meets up with Steve and Sally. She wants to remind them of the tough weight loss goals she set Linda, Preeti and Steve. It's clear she means business. If they come back, next time mm -hmm. and they haven't lost that weight mm -hmm. and they come saying yes but I've been exercising and it, yeah. it hasn't quite well as I far as you're concerned out yeah categorically they have to be how can you run a marathon carrying mm. twice your body weight around and if you can't commit in the first month mm. then you obviously haven't got the commitment on those tough long winter nights when you're doing the 10 mile mm. runs mm. and so on and so forth so it's make or break for them I think mm. they've got to come on, come back having shown that they've been exercising regularly that they've met their weight loss targets and that you can see active proof that they've been mm. out doing it mm. yeah because if they haven't there's no point when we come back next month we would like you as you know to have another go at the mile the test that we did yesterday this time the bare minimum that we think would be required from all of you is to be able to run at least one mile you've got to run 26 miles in April if you can't run one mile then your chances of doing that are practically nil. Next week, the training starts to take its toll. My legs are Some get their final warning. And we tried for like a year to lose a stone. It doesn't seem to work. We're frustrated. Will sheer determination be enough to get them through? At the end of the day, I'm going to follow the training program that I've been given. I'm going to follow it to the letter, and I'm going to do it bloody fully committed. <laughs>